Hello, everybody. This is uh, Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Welcome to this episode of Bible Talk with Brother Luke. Uh, this is a di daily live one hour broadcast uh, about a Bible study and fellowship. So um, if you uh, want to join the discussion, you can click on the link provided you've read the rules and, and, uh, and, and agree to the uh, core doctrines uh, expressed in my statement of faith. You're welcome to uh, join under those uh, conditions. Um, if you don't join the discussion, then at least I'm glad that you're going to at least watch. Uh, this is going to be part four in a, in a uh, uh, ongoing study of certain terminology and words that are sometimes confused and, uh, and uh, misused uh, in, in Christianity. Uh, the, the words we discussed last uh, yesterday were repent, baptize, death, hell, eternal life, and heresy. Uh, we did uh, two pre uh, previous videos on this. I hope you go back and watch them all. I think this will be very, very helpful to you, and I do believe this is important, an important topic. Uh, I'm going to go on today, and uh, the words I'm going to discuss here are uh, overcomer, will of the Father, obey, commandments, law, works, sin, and heaven. So those are the words I'm hoping to get through to today. Uh, right now I have with me from Australia is uh, my brother Ray, who joined me yesterday. Uh, is your uh, microphone uh, functioning now? Hmm. All right, well, hopefully you'll be able to get it working. All right, I'm going to go on begin and uh, discuss this first word, uh, which is overcomer. And the reason that this is an important word to understand is because there's a lot of people that uh, say that um, uh, in order to be saved, you've got to be an overcomer. And they define that and explain it as you must overcome sin for the rest of your life. Uh, and if you persevere and endure through the end of your life, and you've, then you're an overcomer of your sin, and uh, therefore uh, you qualify uh, to be saved and go to heaven. Uh, so that is, um, that's a misrepresentation of what the, the word uh, means uh, in, in the scriptures uh, in terms of salvation. So, uh, if, if you're somebody watching now, and at any point in your life, you called on the name of the Lord Jesus for salvation, and you said, Jesus, I need you to save me. I, I believe you. I trust you. Uh, you know, you died for my sins. Uh, you raised yourself from the dead. You proved you have power over life and death, and, and I'm trusting you for my salvation. I'm not trusting in my own works and my own ability. If you've ever come to that conclusion and, and believe that, then uh, at that point, you were what Scripture says is terms are born again, um, quickened. Um, you were, your spirit was brought to life. You were regenerated. You were, you were brought to life. You had a dead spirit. And because of your faith in Jesus, your spirit is quickened and brought to life. Now your spirit's alive. You're born again spiritually. You're a child of God. You have eternal life guaranteed to you. You have the Holy Spirit of God um, inside you and living in you forever. All throughout eternity, the Holy Spirit is in you and, and uh, the Spirit of Jesus. And he says he will never leave you or forsake you. So that's all the things that happen at the moment, at the very instant you put your faith in Jesus. And the Bible says that all those people who have put their faith in Jesus in that way are the overcomers. So that's why you, that's what's important to understand about this, uh, this word overcomer. You know, if, if people tell you you got to persevere to the end, you got to endure, you got to overcome, all, uh, the Bible says you are all those who put their faith in Jesus are overcomers. You've, now, let's go on to the next word, and it is um, will of the Father. Um, the, the scripture tells us that. Uh, to be saved, we've got to do the will of the Father. And people, um, some people interpret that to mean 
that we've got to follow commandments and laws and rules and be religious and be good and stop sinning and change our lives. And that's the will of the Father is what they think. But um, you know, the, the scripture actually tells us what the will of the Father is. It says, if you believe on the Son, Jesus Christ, for your salvation, that is the will of the Father. That's what the Father wants you to do. So uh, if you have put your faith in Jesus, you have uh, done the will of the Father. And the will of the Father is to believe in the Son. And then the next term here is uh, obey. O obey. Um, They, uh, the word obey is uh, used by a lot of people who want to, um, who are what we would term as legalists. Um, they're, they're religious people. By religion, I mean, um, uh, religion is a system of things that you must strive to do in order to please God and satisfy God. That's what religion is. But I have a shirt that says uh, Christianity is not a religion because Christianity, biblical Christianity, the type of Christianity we find in the scriptures here, the kind of Christianity that saves you, biblical Christianity is not really a religion. It's not a system of do's and don'ts that you've got to do to hopefully satisfy God. Uh, Christianity is a relationship, a personal relationship with Jesus Christ as your Savior God. Uh, uh, my relationship with Jesus is uh, I worship him. He's God Almighty who became a man. Uh, I love him. Scripture says we love him because he first loved us. He loved us so much that he gave his life for us. Uh, scripture says that um, God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Uh, Jesus said, uh, there is no greater love than being willing to give your life for a friend. And Scripture says that some people peradventure might be willing to die for someone, a good person. We've heard of that happening before. People sacrificing their life to save a loved one or a good person. But he says, but how many would be willing to die to save sinners, to save mankind who are all sinners? Uh, a wretch like me and you. Uh, but that's what Jesus did. God commended this love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So that's that's what we need to understand about Jesus is that, that uh, he is God Almighty. He became a man. He loved us so much. He was willing to die for our sins. And it's a, a relationship. Christianity is a personal relationship with Christ. We're relying on Christ for our salvation. We're not striving, trying to work our way to heaven on our own. So that's what biblical Christianity is, uh, but the uh, the term um, obey, I mean the word obey, um, that, that goes along with religion, not Christianity. Religions tell you you've got to obey, 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 obey. Religion says do, 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 don't, 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 obey this. But Christianity doesn't say do. Christianity says done. It's finished. Jesus said it's finished when he's, as he's dying on the cross. It's finished. He's done everything. We just need to believe in what he's done, not on what we're, what we're doing. So the, the one thing that you must obey in Christianity is uh, obey the gospel, which is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. But believe that he is your savior God that he died for your sins he raised himself from the dead he proved he has power over life and death obey that and in other words believe that and then another word we have here is uh, commandments um, I know that brother Ray who had left he's probably having some technical problems 
he told me yesterday that Jesus had, I think, 46 commandments. I'm not familiar with everything he, he was alluding to there. Uh, but when I'm talking about commandments, uh, I'm talking about those people who uh, tell you you've got to follow the commandments. And there's a, there's a really big misunderstanding in Christendom. Now, Christendom is a giant umbrella that people are under, and all these people under the umbrella of Christendom, uh, they identify themselves as a Christian of some kind. And there's a wide variety of what they call, you know, Christian sects or denominations. And I would say that the vast majority of them are not biblical Christians at all. They're, they don't believe anything like what I've been telling you here so far. That uh, salvation is not gained through your own efforts and your personal merit, but salvation is a gift from Jesus you receive through faith in him. Uh, the vast majority of Christendom under that umbrella don't believe that at all. They're not biblical Christians. So what they're going to tell you is to be religious, obey, do the will of the Father, and it, which is they think is following all the commandments, but the commandments they're referring to were part of Judaism. And I'd say this is one of the biggest misunderstandings in Christendom today is that uh, Christianity and Judaism are totally two different things. Uh, you know, uh, Jesus' uh, apostles and disciples were Jews. Uh, he came first to the Jews, and but then his, his message and his salvation is available to everybody in the world, not only Jews. But when he, he, he came, his genealogy is from the Jewish line, from uh, the lineage of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Judah, Jesse, David, that line. And that, that's all in prophecy. Pro prophecies in the Bible say that he would come, and that would be the descendant line. For the Messiah, so uh, Jesus was was uh, a Jew, and and Jesus practiced Judaism. He practiced it perfectly. No one else had ever been able to practice Judaism perfectly. And that's why the Bible says we all fall short. No, no matter how hard we try to be, uh, you know, practice Judaism or practice any religion, we can't do it perfectly. It's impossible. That's why Jesus said, uh, when uh, his his Apostle says, well, if that rich man can't get into heaven, well, how is it possible for anyone to be saved? Jesus said, with man, it is impossible. That's what you need to understand. It is impossible for man to get to heaven through their own efforts. But Jesus said, but with God, all things are possible. With God, you can go to heaven, relying on God to get you to heaven. And that's what Jesus' name means. Jesus' name literally translates to God saves. Jesus is God who saves. So um, this Judaism that came from, uh, uh, first of all, uh, Adam and Eve were not Jews. Noah, Noah was not a, a Jew. Abraham was not a Jew. Um, I, Isaac was not a Jew. Uh, even Jacob, who became known as Israel, was not a Jew. Uh, that the Jews are really the people who are from uh, one of the 12 children of Jacob, Israel, and uh, that tribe of Judah. They are called Jews. But that's being technical. But broadly, uh, the descendants of, of Jacob are considered to be Jews. And this, uh, from there, uh, they were put into, ex uh, into uh, slavery in Egypt. Uh, and then when Moses led them out, Moses established through, God established through Moses, uh, Judaism, uh, as we find it in, in the scriptures. And that is the, there were um, 613 Mosaic or laws of Judaism. Um, and Ten of these laws were written in stone. The others were all written on parchment. The ten that are written in stone were called, the ten, we call the Ten Commandments. 
but they're really 613 laws in Judaism. Now, one thing that you must understand is that none of these Jewish laws were, were ever given to the Gentile world. Now, Judaism, and even Jews today, even if you take all the Jews in the world today, and, and, and let's say that there's 10 million Jews in the world, I don't know. I think there's around six or seven million in Israel, and there's probably another, you know, uh, maybe, you know, five or ten million around the world. Uh, so it, uh, the number of people who are from this lineage, this genetic line, they're called Jews, only a small percentage of them are really even religious Jews. And they don't even practice Judaism as we find it in the scriptures today, rather than following what we learn in the Old Testament, the first 39 books of the Bible is the Old Testament, and it's called, these 39 books, Jesus referred to it as the Law and the Prophets. Uh, but uh, the, the religious Jews today don't even follow that. What they follow is the, uh, not the Torah, but the Talmud. It's, uh, I believe it's uh, about 40, 40 large voluminous books, each one the size of this whole, whole Bible. And they're all written by uh, rabbis uh, just before and after uh, Jesus's time. And their teachings from these rabbis and, and their teachings have nothing and nothing even similar to what you find in the law and the prophets. Uh, and and uh, they couldn't practice Judaism anyway, as it was found in the Old Testament, because they don't have a temple only. So they can't do their sacrifices. So the temple, the Jewish temple, was destroyed in 70 A.D. when Titus conquered Jerusalem. So all this being said, so that you can understand that uh, when we talk about commandments, when people say commandments, uh, it's important to understand that that that's all a reference to Judaism, and Judaism applied to this small uh, group of people that the Bible calls a strange, a strange people. God said they would be a strange and peculiar people. They would have a peculiar way that, that he asked them to, to live and rules and commandments to follow so they would stand out and be, well, nobody else is like them. Those Jews are really different. And from their family line, this Savior God, Messiah, Jesus, would come. Uh, but the important thing to understand is that all of Judaism circumcision, the Ten Commandments, the 613 laws, uh, all, all those things were never given to Gentiles. And the Gentiles are like 99% of the world's population, 99.9. A tiny little fraction of the world's population were Jews practicing Judaism. So now when the church first started, Jesus died for our sins. He was raised from the dead. He, in the, after the resurrection, he walked on the earth with his apostles, disciples, and uh, hundreds of eyewitnesses. They touched him. They, they fellowshiped with him. They ate with him. And then he ascended up to heaven. Uh, after he went up to heaven, he left a job up to the apostles uh, to uh, establish and grow the church. The, the church is a collection of all the believers. Everyone who believes in Jesus Christ for their salvation is part of this church. And so Jesus uh, gave the apostles the task of establishing this, this church. And the beginnings of the church, everybody was Jewish. And, um, there were no Gentiles in the church in the beginning. At Pentecost, they were all Jews up in the room when the Holy Spirit descended on them and they were all baptized and dwelled and sealed with the Holy Spirit. Uh, and they began speaking and teaching and witnessing and testifying about Jesus Christ to the Jews. Then something really weird happened. And that is that the apostle Peter had a, a dream or a vision. And in that vision, he was told that uh, he didn't understand it at first, but he was basically being told that uh, all the things in Judaism that were forbidden are no longer forbidden because Judaism is, is over with. And, and he was supposed to talk to Gentiles and tell them about Jesus. And at the same time, Cornelius, uh, a, a, a Gentile, 
who had a, a family, he had a uh, similar dream and he was told to find Peter. So he found Peter and told Peter about his dream and they, the dreams coincided and Peter knew that he was supposed to tell them the gospel, the good news about Jesus. So contrary to what the hyper dispensationalists, the Paul onlyists will tell you, uh, the apostle Paul was not the first apostle to the Gentiles. It was the apostle Peter was the first long years before the apostle Paul uh, even ever got saved and began teaching. Uh, so the Apostle Peter told Cornelius and his family about Jesus. They got saved. They got uh, the Holy Spirit as a sign that they were saved. And, and uh, at that time, uh, Peter said, look, the, to, to James and the Jerusalem church, he said, look, uh, who am I to argue with God? He said, go tell the Gentiles about it. And, and they, they, they have the same opportunity as we have to believe in Jesus and uh, they get saved the same way that we do believe on the Lord Jesus Christ is a term that we find for first coming from Peter's mouth not 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 Paul's mouth uh, I have a playlist called Paul only isn't debunked and I go into a lot more detail on this and I debunk all of the arguments that the Paul only is are making uh, so I hope you'll watch that if you're either a Paul only or if you are being uh, you know recruited into Paul onlyism. Uh, but the, the point I'm trying to make in this uh, long explanation here is that um, the church was originally made up of Jews and then the Gentiles were included. And the mystery that Paul uh, talks about, that the Paul only say this mystery is that, that uh, people would no longer be saved through religious work, but now they can be saved by the grace of God through faith in Jesus, his death, burial, and resurrection. The Paul only will say that's the mystery that Paul was given and revealed. But Paul says it out of his own mouth. No, the mystery is that uh, Gentiles are included. It, salvation through Jesus is not just for Jews, it's also for Gentiles. That was the mystery according uh, according to, to Paul. And this all happened in the beginning when Peter was talking to, to Cornelius and his family and they got saved. And then he told James and the leaders of the Jerusalem church about the Gentiles being included. And they decided that they wanted to accept that, but they didn't realize well, Peter knew because God told him these things that are forbidden, these foods and things that you do in Judaism, uh, uh, they're no longer forbidden. Don't say anything is uh, unclean. You can, you don't have to follow that, all the religious laws of Judaism anymore. Uh, Peter was, that was revealed to Peter in his vision. But James and the others, uh, they didn't understand that. Uh, watch my playlist, uh, Shocking Facts About the Book of James. I go into great detail ex explaining this, but uh, at this time, at the beginning of the church, the, the 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 Jews were the ones that first believed in Jesus, and they were wrong in two counts. They were wrong thinking that salvation would only be available to Jews, and they were also wrong thinking that uh, they would, Jews would continue practicing Judaism. They even thought, in at one point, that any Gentile that believed they would have to practice Judaism. And there was an argument over that. And, and they finally conceded, okay, the Gentiles don't have to practice Judaism, but, but they thought that the Jews must continue practicing Judaism, even including animal sacrifices. And that's what I believe the Apostle Paul wrote the book of Hebrews. And he's arguing against that in the book of Hebrews saying, you can't continue doing animal sacrifices, practicing Judaism and doing animal sacrifices because Jesus was the sacrifice once for all. It's, his sacrifice is sufficient. Don't insult his death on the cross by continuing sacrifices. So this idea that um, this these commandments uh, that were part of Judaism, uh, circumcision, all the laws of Judaism, animal sacrifices, uh, that uh, that's part of Christianity. 
uh, that is still a problem today that a lot of people think that somehow when we become a Christian, we need to adopt Judaism too. So many Christians today are like, they're Gentiles who put their faith in Jesus and now they, and they feel that they've got to also follow many of the tenets of Judaism, like the Ten, like the Ten Commandments and, and, uh, and abstaining from certain things. So the important thing to understand is that the, the commandments were never given to us. You know, we, do, do, we do have some commandments. There is a commandment that's uh, universal for everyone. And uh, Jesus says, I'm going to condense everything you need to do down into to just two things. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And he says, if you do this, you'll be satisfying all of the law. And so that's really what we should do. And there, Jesus said that my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, um, being yoked to Jesus, let's say you, being yoked is like being joined to him. Your spirit is dead. The Holy Spirit is alive and has life-giving power. And you put your faith in Jesus. And just by putting your faith in Jesus, it's easy. All you can do is trust him. And then your spirit is joined, yoked to the Holy Spirit. You are yoked to Jesus. And your spirit is quick and brought to life. Now you've got a spirit that's alive. And you're a child of God. Um, but when that's easy to do. All that's required is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's easy to get yoked to Jesus and receive salvation. But when he says, my burden is light, the burden Jesus puts on us is, Will you just love each other? Now, your salvation does not hinge upon it. Some people are going to be better at loving than others. Some people are going to be better at forgiving than others. Some, some people are going to be failures at loving and forgiving. Uh, but your salvation does not hinge upon it. But this is what Jesus commands us to do. Love each other. That's the burden. That's, that's what we should strive to do. And we, through our own efforts, we'll, we'll fail. But with the Holy Spirit living inside us, transforming us, uh, then, uh, uh, you know, we will grow in, in our love for each other. Um, so these are all related here, that these words and terms here. Uh, overcomer, will of the Father, obey, commandments. And the next word is law. I've pretty much covered what the law is. Uh, the law refers to uh, these Jewish laws. And as I said, the Jewish laws were never given to me. And even if you're a Jew and you think you're, that you are under Jewish law, you're no longer under Jewish law, just like the, the, the beginning of the church. They were told by the Apostle Paul uh, in, in the book of Galatians, that's the entire argument there. Uh, in Jerusalem, there, James is thinking that the Jews have to continue practicing Judaism and Judaism must be continued. And, and Paul in Galatians is saying, no, no, Judaism is not part of this. Don't, he called them Judaizers. Don't come into the church as I've started here and bring in Judaism and legalism. Keep that out of here. That has nothing to do with Christianity. So in the book of Galatians, Paul's arguing that, hey, Judaism is over. The real Jews, the, the real Israel, are the new believers who put their faith in Jesus and they're not under legal the laws of Judaism anymore and then they in the book of Hebrews he takes it a step further and says not only don't uh, um, require circumcision and, and the uh, other laws and but also don't don't require animal sacrifices because as I said before Jesus, all the sacrifices were just a picture to a future sacrifice that was going to come. And that was Jesus being sacrificed on our cross, uh, on the cross for our sins. And because of that, our sins are forgiven. Um, the next word is sin. And sin is... Uh, The, the a lot of people tempt to define sin in a in a, a narrow way, like sin is breaking a law. 
but I believe sin is, is broader than that, than that, and that's what Jesus uh, did. He, he broadened it so much that he, he actually was making people, trying to make people understand that you think you're being good and following all the laws properly, and that you're a law-abiding person that you know God loves because you're such a good person? No, you're not. If you think, if you if you say that you haven't murdered anybody, but the truth is, if you've ever hated someone, you have murdered that person in your heart and in your mind. You've already murdered them. He says you're guilty of murder in your heart. He says. Uh, you say that you have not committed adultery, but I say to you, if you've even thought about it, if you've ever looked at someone who had lustful thoughts, then you've already committed adultery or fornication with that person in your mind and in your heart. So uh, Jesus, uh, I, I call these the impossible sayings of Jesus. Uh, Jesus was wanted to show us the impossibility of getting to heaven through personal merit. Uh, that's why he told the rich young ruler, go sell everything you own. He thought he was really, really good. He was done follow the commandments. He said perfectly. And he said, well, sell everything you own and give it to the poor and come and follow me. He knew he couldn't give up his wealth because he loved his wealth. So he, he put him in that position. So hopefully he'd understand that, wait a second, what's required of me is too much. I can't do it. And and that and that's what we all need to understand what's required of us is too much it's perfection if you want to go to heaven through your own efforts go ahead and give it a try but the standard is perfection jesus said go and be perfect just as your father in heaven is perfect can you do it if you if you can do it great you'll be the second person to do it jesus was the only one maybe you'll be as good as him but if you can understand that it's a futile attempt to to be perfect and never sin, then you'll understand that, that uh, your need for Jesus and his forgiveness and his salvation. So uh, sin is not just breaking the, he said, the, the letter of the law. He says you follow the letter of the law, but you don't understand the heart of the law. And that's what he meant by, look, it's even if you have bad thoughts. See, so sin is broader than just committing a sinful act or breaking a law. You've got sins of commission, where if I steal your property, I've committed it. It's, everybody can see that's that's obvious, okay? But if I covet, if I just desire it and jealous of you, then I've that's a sin of my mind. So there's sins of commission, and there's sins of the heart, sinful thoughts. And then there's another thing that a lot of people neglect, and that's sins of omission. And where uh, uh, the, you had an opportunity to do something good and help someone, and, and you turned your back and didn't help them. You omitted it. You neglected to do something good when you had the opportunity. And we've all done that. So when you understand the scope of sin and what, and what it is, then it's easy to understand that, well, wow, this is, this is so much that, it, it's it's so and widely wide encompassing that now I realize how much of a sinner I am. Now, if you if you look at sin in that way, the correct way, that it's not only a, a bad act you've committed, but it, and it's good acts that you fail to commit, and and, it, and it's even bad thoughts then you'd probably think, well, gee, I'm sinning all the time. I, every day I sin. And, and what if a person sinned three times a day? And I think that's very conservative for a person to, gee, are we out there doing every good thing you could possibly do? Or do you, are you negligent? Are you actively doing something bad? Are you even thinking about it? Well, if that's the case, then you know you easily sin three times a day. Three times a day in a year is over a, a thousand sins a year. And if you live 70 or 80 years, it's 70 or 80,000 sins. And I'm sure that many people probably sin, you know, 10 times that much. 
700,000 sins in a lifetime, a million sins in a lifetime. But the important thing to understand is it's not the number of sins that's the issue. One person sins this much, another person sins this much, but they're both sinners. You sin at all, you're classified as a sinner. Uh, it, and it's not the variety of sins. Like the type of sins that I've done in my life might be completely different than the type of sins that you've done in your life. So uh, we don't, uh, don't, don't think that because of the type of sins you are doing, you don't consider it to be a serious, that's not, that's not the issue, the, the type. Don't think that because other people sin more than you, that you're off the hook. No, if you sin at all, you're guilty. But when we understand that, then it's easy to understand how much we've been forgiven. 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 We're only forgiven one way, and that's through the cross. Jesus died on the cross. He says he's the propitiation for our sins. In other words, his death on the cross served as a full payment uh, uh, that uh, the, the problem of sin has been settled. It's been wiped away because Jesus paid for all our sins. And it says, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And that means not only for all those of us who put our faith in Jesus, but even the atheists, the, the, the Muslims, uh, uh, the, the Buddhists, uh, everybody. Uh, Jesus paid for everybody's sins. So what you need to understand is that the issue between man and God today is not sin. It's not a sin problem. Jesus died for our sins. The issue is the Son. It's a Son problem, the Son of God. What will you do with Jesus Christ? Now, um, that leads me to, let me see if there's another word here. Uh, no, I think I talked about heaven in the last, uh, on the study yesterday, so that's the end of the words I have on this list here. Uh, so let me just sum this up by saying that if you understand now that um, you're a sinner, and but Jesus died for your sins. He paid for your sins. And you understand that Jesus loved you so much that even though you're a sinner, he, he died for you. The Bible says we love him because he first loved us. If you understand how much Jesus loves you, that he was willing to die for you, it's natural to love him in return and appreciate him. And now I want you to understand when Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. The Father is in heaven. No man gets into heaven except through Jesus Christ. Jesus said he's the way. The, he, he, he not only said he's the way to go to heaven, he said he's the one and only way. So if you're trying to get to heaven through Islam, you know, Muhammad. Muhammad's not the way. You can pray six times a day on a rug and go to Mecca and even die, die for your religion as a martyr, and you're still not going to go to heaven. You'll, you'll end up in hell because Jesus said he's the only way. What about the Pope? we got this dope Francis now. Pope's not the way. Roman Catholicism is not the way. Every Roman Catholic I've ever talked to, and I was a Roman Catholic growing up, but they all think they go to heaven through, oh yeah, following the Roman Catholic religion, believing its tenets and practicing it, uh, getting water baptized, going to confession, going to communion, going to confirmation, uh, getting married, getting your last rites. I think there's one more I missed. But doing these sacraments, lighting the candles, practicing religion, and being a good person, and giving to charity, see, it's all based upon what you do instead of what Jesus did. So Roman Catholicism is not the way. Romans 10.3, it says, it says that they're trying to uh, get to heaven through their own righteousness, through your own personal merit, but that's not God's way. 
God's way is put your faith in Jesus and you receive his righteousness because of your faith in him. So uh, Jesus says he's the way, he's the one and only way. He says he's the truth. I mean, you, you can know a thousand facts about the Bible, but there's one truth you need to know if you want to go to heaven, Jesus. He's the truth. Put your faith in him. And uh, he's the life. Well, after he died on the cross, he was buried on the third day. He was raised from the dead. Scriptures say that the Father raised him from the dead. Scriptures say the Holy Spirit raised him from the dead. Jesus claimed that he would raise himself from the dead. When the Jews asked him for a sign, he said, just as a, uh, the only sign I'll give you is the sign of Jonah. As just as Jonah was in the belly of the whale for three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. It was a picture he was talking about his death, burial, and resurrection. And he said, he said he will raise himself from the dead. So it was a joint effort. Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Spirit made the, Jesus come back alive again. And that resurrection is a picture of a future event that we're all going to go through, the resurrection of all mankind. And uh, so by the resurrection, uh, this is to give us confidence that Jesus is who he said he was. He said he's God. He came down from heaven. He, he, he said that uh, he uh, would die on a cross for our sins, give his life as a ransom for many. Uh, and he said that if you believe in him, he will resurrect you to eternal life so um, that's what you that's what you really need to do so I think this kind of all these words here all kind of all fit together this word study here about uh, lead us right into understanding that uh, stop trying to get to heaven through your personal merit Stop thinking that somehow Judaism is, is part of Christianity and the Mosaic Laws, the Ten Commandments, or anything in Judaism is, is somehow applies to us. Reject all that. And instead, rely on Jesus Christ for your salvation. Depend on Him. Believe on Him. Believe in His ability to save you. Believe in His faithfulness to save you. Scripture says He cannot lie. He cannot break a promise. He promises you eternal life if you put your faith in Him. I hope you do it. All right, that's enough for today. Uh, uh, join me uh, daily, 1 p.m. Pacific time, for these uh, live broadcasts, uh, Bible studies, and fellowship. And bless you all in the name of our great Savior God. His name is Jesus Christ.